Hello my dear students, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is me once again, Teacher Teen, your science teacher for today. If you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for more updates in Science 7. Welcome to another vlog. Welcome to quarter 2, week 5, module 5 of your science 7. For today's vlog, we are going to discuss about factors affecting living organisms and non-living components. Okay, so since nasa second quarter pa rin tayo, so parang kadugtong ito ng naging lesson natin nung mga nakaraang vlog natin. And of course, pag-uusapan pa rin natin dito yung ecosystem. So, natatandaan nyo ba kung ano ang ecosystem? So, alam natin na when we say ecosystem, ecosystems have a natural balance between abiotic and biotic factors. At alam natin, so since nasa ecosystem, so yung ating natural system nagkakaroon, nagiging balance yan sapagkat nagkakaroon ng cycle. The transfer of energy drives the cycling of matter. Tandaan nyo na merong three basic components ang ecosystem. Ano-ano to? Number one, we have the autotrophs, we have consumers, and abiotic matter. Okay, so unahin natin i-discuss yung tinatawag natin na autotrophs or yung tinatawag natin na producer. Yung producers or yung autotrophs, largely, ito yung mga green plants na nakikita natin sa paligid. At itong mga green plants na to, ginagamit nila yung energy from the sun sa process ng photosynthesis. Alam naman natin na yung photosynthesis, ito yung proseso on how they can make their own food. So, again, ginagamit nila yung energy from the sun in photosynthesis para matransform nila yung inorganic compounds into uh, simpler organic compounds. Next of the basic component of ecosystem, we have the consumers or yung tinatawag natin na heterotrophs. So, ano naman sila? So, itong mga consumers, ginagamit naman nila yung uh, organic compound na naproduce ng mga autotrophs kanina para maging source of food through the composition of the heterotrophs. Eventually, natatransform naman nila itong mga complex organic substance into simpler inorganic compound. And tandaan nyo rin na itong heterotrophic component na de-divide ito sa dalawa. Meron tayong consumer at meron tayong tinatawag na decomposer. So, syempre, itong consumer natin, they feed largely in living tissues. However, at ito namang decomposer, of course, other composers break down dead matter into organic substances. Okay, now, let's talk about the non-living environment. So, yung tinatawag natin na abiotic factors, these are the non-living parts of organisms' ecosystem. Examples of the abiotic factors, we have the air, currents, temperature, moisture, light, and soil. Yung ecology, talagang sinama nila sa pag-aaral yung mga non-living organism na nakikita natin sa ating ecosystem dahil ito naman talaga ay part pa rin ng ecosystem or ng ating environment which is essential din naman doon sa mga biotic factors. Okay, kasi let's say for example, yung mga ecologists, nag-aaral sila tungkol sa study of mole or the ecology of mole. Alam niyo yung mole, ito siya. So, kumbaga, sa pag-aaral nila ng hayop na to, itong mga mole na to, kailangan din nilang pag-aralan yung mga soil kung saan ba nabubuhay itong mga mole na to, paano sila nanganganak, paano sila nagpaparami, paano sila nagre-reproduce. So, kailangan i-include pa rin yung type of soil kung saan pwedeng mabuhay yung mga mole. Kaya naman itong ecology ay talagang kasama sa pag-aaral yung mga abiotic factors or abiotic components. Okay now, so let's talk about the living environment. So, ano ba yung meron sa living environment? Of course, andyan ay tinatawag natin na biotic factors. So, biotic factors, we are talking about the living organisms or the living components in an ecosystem. Okay, syempre, so sa living environment, pinag-aaralan na dyan yung, uh, kumbaga, ano ba yung mga klase ng species na kayang mabuhay in a particular environment. Kaya naman, pinag-aaralan din dyan kung kagaya ng 
let's say for example, extended uh, lack of rainfall in a grassland or sa isang lugar na parang ang, ang dalang-dalang umulan. So, tendency magkakaroon siya ng drought. So, ano ba yung possible effect nito dun sa mga hayop or tao na naninirahan in that particular area? So, may possibility ba na mamatay yung mga hayop na nandun sa lugar na wala man lang tag-ulan? So, puro init. Eh, di ba pa? Siyempre, kung puro init yon so wala na silang may inam na tubig. So, ano kaya ang tendency or ano yung lifespan ng mga uh, living organisms na nakatira naman doon? So, kasama yan sa pinag-aaralan ng mga ecologists. Tandaan natin na lahat ng organisms nakadepende yan sa iba. It may be directly or indirectly sa, for example, sa food, sa shelter, reproduction, or protection. Kung kayo ay isa sa nag-aaral ng tungkol sa kung paano ba nabubuhay ang mga living organism or ang mga individual organism, let's say for example, this uh, male white uh, tail deer. So, syempre, isa sa pag-aaralan nyo dyan is paano ba nakaka-survive yung mga, kung paano ba sila nakaka-survive. Ano yung kinakain nilang pagkain? Ano yung prefer nilang pagkain? Gaano kadalas silang kumakain? Or gaano kalayo yung iniikot nila para lang makahanap sila ng food? Isa yun sa mga kinoconsider kapag nag-aaral kayo ng isang living organism. Well, actually, hindi naman porket iisang klase lang ng individual organism yung pinag-aaralan nyo is malalaman nyo na yung lahat-lahat ng tungkol dito sa individual animal na kagaya nga nitong white-tailed deer. So, kung baga kahit pag-aaralan mo siya na ito lang yung pinag-aaralan mo, hindi mo naman masasabi lahat ng tungkol sa kanya. And to tell you, in fact, ang mga white-tailed deer, they are very social animal. Ibig sabihin, mahilig sila makihalubilo sa kanilang mga kagrupo. And they belong to a small group lang naman. Kaya lang, kahit small group yun, uh, kumaga, meron pa rin silang interaction with one another. And they, they build a strong relationship, strong communication. They have a strong social structure built around visual and vocal communication na that, that keep them safe. Okay, so I'll give you an example. What can you see in this picture? Okay, this is an aquarium. So, ano ang meron sa aquarium? Alam nyo ba kung ano yung mga abiotic components na Ano yung mga biotic components? Sige nga, kayo nga isa-isahin nyo. Ayan, yung fishes, yung water, yung rocks, yung plants. So, saan siya kabilang? Alin dyan ang biotic at alin dyan ang abiotic component? How about this one? A cow in a farm. So, ano ang nakikita nyo dyan? Alin kaya dyan ang biotic and abiotic component? Yan ang gagawin nyo sa inyong learning task number one. For learning task number one, so you have to study these pictures and then uh, mention at least two biotic and, abio and two abiotic components shown. And then you're going to describe the functions of each identified abiotic components, okay? And then, yan, pwede nyo isulat yan sa isang sa kapirasong papel. So, yan yung gagawin nyo para sa week na ito. Since na-discuss natin ano ba ang pagkakaiba ng biotic and abiotic component or abiotic factor, so, madali nyo nang ma-identify yan. This is the end of our lesson vlog for today's topic about factors affecting living organism and non-living components. Up next, we're going to discuss uh, about ecological relationships. So I hope you still stay tuned on this channel for more videos about Science 7. So I hope to see you next time. This is me once again, Teacher Teen. So if you have learned the vlog, na ito, please like, subscribe, and uh, leave your comment below at babasahin natin yan isa isa. Maraming salamat nga pala sa patuloy na nanonood ng lesson vlog natin ito. So, once again, Teacher Teen, and for if you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for more updates in Science 7. Bye!